How's it going? I hope everyone's doing well. Um, my name is uh, JBO, and today I want to talk to you about macOS security features uh, and how we learn about them by bypassing them in Microsoft. Uh, we have to have one Who Am I slide. Uh, my name is JBO, yo 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 JBO on Twitter. Um, I'm a security researcher in Microsoft focusing on offensive security. Uh, I'm the Microsoft Defender for Endpoint uh, Research Architect for Cross-Platform. It's a huge, huge uh, line. It basically means that I'm responsible of paving the way for uh, Microsoft Defender on everything that does not run Windows. And that specifically includes Linux, Android, Mac OS, and iOS. Uh, we do some Windows stuff here and there, but that's basically our, our, our focus. Uh, I also try to come up with funny vulnerability names, and you'll see two of them in this uh, talk right here. Um, I want to talk about macOS security in general. Uh, macOS is really interesting in terms of uh, history and how it's, it's, it's intertwined with POSIX and BSD and, and some Apple stuff. Uh, but basically, when you look at macOS security, you look at uh, three different classes, if you will. Uh, one of them is like POSIX traditional one, the ones that you usually see in, in Linux, let's say. Uh, there is a BSD layer, which is very interesting. Uh, Mac ports, for instance, is, is, is an important one in BSD. And it's not just found on, on uh, Mac OS. You can find that, for instance, on GNU Herd or whatnot. Uh, and there is an Apple proprietary layer. And today, we'll be focusing on the Apple proprietary layer, although the other ones are still very, very interesting. Um, Apple proprietary. When we talk about the Apple proprietary layer, uh, we basically talk about Apple entitled binaries. What are really entitled binaries even? Entitled binaries are, are, are uh, certain binaries uh, that can do certain things that other binaries cannot. The entitlements are basically a set of capabilities that are assigned as a part of the digital signature, uh, digital signature on the binary itself. Uh, and that's pretty interesting, and basically that means that that's kind of like a security capability. Uh, they're interesting because they're just interesting. They're undocumented, uh, some of them at, at least, and if you reverse engineer them, they have tons of assumptions. And this is not my quote, I don't remember who said that, but basically, it took years to secure Linux suite binaries, and we still get some interesting suite binary vulnerabilities, even this year, um, we got two, really. Uh, and how much scrutiny did Apple really get on the entitled binaries? And, and the answer is that uh, less than the suite binaries, probably. Um, so I want to talk about my first vulnerability. Uh, it's a SIP bypass called Truthless. Um, what is SIP? SIP is uh, System Integrity Protection. As the name suggests, it kind of protects the integrity of the system, uh, even from root. Uh, also, it's called rootless for, for obvious reasons. Uh, it's what, it was introduced in Yosemite. Um, it leverages the Apple Sandbox, which I won't be talking too much about today, uh, on the entire platform, again, even from root. I see that, uh, and that's just my personal interpretation, uh, as the equivalent of SE Linux, but on Mac. Um, and the interesting thing about SIP, obviously, it has to protect itself against root. So you can't really turn it off unless you're in recovery mode. Um, internally, SIP is, 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 com is configured, at least, by two NVRAM variables. One of them is called CSR Active Config, which is a bit mask of enabled protections. And the other one is CSR Data that I won't be talking about at all. Uh, so forget about it. Uh, you can't legitimately, again, modify those two NVRAM variables without booting into recovery mode. Otherwise, SIP is, is useless, right? Uh, and there is a tool called CSR Util. It controls SIP, uh, and in non-recovery mode, it can only do very basic things. In here, you can see that I'm doing CSR Util status, and it says enabled, just like get and force on Linux. Uh, and if you try to disable it, basically it will, uh, like, under the hood, it will try to change the NVRAM variables, but on a live system, you won't be able to do that, so you just get, like, no. Um, so that's SIP. Um, the NVRAM variable is, as I said, a bit mask. It controls all of the protections that you see here, and basically compromising any of these is considered a SIP bypass. Uh, some of them, like, you can read the names here. 
I'll, I'll, I just want to talk about some interesting ones. The first one uh, uh, basically uh, allows you to load uh, untrusted kernel extensions, so yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, uh, the second one is uh, bypassing uh, file system checks by SIP, and we'll be talking a lot about that. The third one, for instance, is uh, uh, allowing task for PID, which the, is the equivalent of open process, but on, on Mac. Uh, kernel debugger, upper internal is pretty interesting, but I won't talk about that too much. Unrestricted NVRAM is also interesting for obvious reasons and so on. Uh, so um, tons of interesting things to do here if you're able to bypass SIP. Um, if you didn't know anything about SIP, but you did some but you did some work on, on Mac OS, the first thing that you'd notice is, is, is probably the file system, re file system restrictions. The reason for that is because it, it, it's really noisy and very, really powerful, and you'll discover that you can't modify restricted files. Um, and a file is restricted if it, it falls under one of these categories. Either it has an extended attribute called com apple rootless, or if it's, it's under some uh, directory mentioned in that config file right here, and it's not whitelisted by two other files. So basically, either it's configured in some config to be uh, protected, or if it has the extended attribute. And obviously, you can't manually uh, turn off like any of these, and you can't even turn on uh, something like that, because if you could, then SIP would protect you, and uh, you will be undeletable. So if, for instance, you're able to create a file and um, and basically make yourself SIP protected, no one will be able to, to de delete you. Obviously, very good for, for uh, malware. Um, and um, basically, like, you can always try to look for these, these things manually if you want to ask yourself whether a file is protected or not. But Apple made it easy with uh, uh, the extension to the LS command with uh, capital O. That's a capital O right here. And in here, you can see an example of me doing ls on slash user, and you can see that some, some of them says restricted. These are basically SIP protected files, and you won't be able to override them, you won't be able to write to them, and so on. Um, so that's like a very strong uh, security feature, and it really allows you to stop malware. In this, uh, in this screenshot right here, it's always interesting, by the way, to uh, look at the log, because the log can tell you a lot. In this screenshot right here, I'm trying to copy a plist file, which is kind of like a configuration file on Mac, uh, to system library launch daemons. That's a persistence mechanism in Mac. And that directory is protected, C protected. So even though I'm running as root, I won't be able to do it. It says operation not permitted. And if I look at the log, it will say uh, localhost kernel sandbox. If you see the magic words together, kernel and sandbox, that's basically zip. Um, so that kind of brings an interesting question, an interesting question, because Apple needs to override these files once in a while. Let's say you do an OS upgrade or something. So how do they do that? So you have a, like a, a very powerful wall. And what Apple did is to puncture a little hole in that wall so they can do their upgrades and whatnot. And this is exactly what we're going to basically abuse here um, in, in this talk. Uh, how does Apple really handle those upgrade situations? What they did is to have, again, Apple, uh, a set of Apple entitlements uh, to completely bypass SIP checks. And all of these entitlements begin with the prefix com apple rootless. So if you have a binary that has com apple rootless whatever, it will, prob it, it will probably skip some uh, SIP checks. Uh, there are two important ones for the file system checks. One of them is com apple rootless install which basically bypasses all of the file system checks. And the other one is com apple rootless install inheritable. That's even more powerful because not on, it, it, will, it means that the, all of the child processes will basically inherit that uh, rootless install capability, basically meaning that all of the child processes of that process uh, will be able to bypass SIP checks. So that's basically kind of the, the, the attack surface, if you will, the obvious attack surface. Um, that's an example of me showing you uh, an, uh, an entitled uh, process, uh, or an entitled Apple entitled bin binary. In this case, it's system shove. Uh, I don't think it's, n I think it's no longer entitled to do that, but whatever. And uh, in here, you can see uh, as a part of the entitlements, it has com Apple uh, rootless install, so it's able to uh, bypass the SIP uh, checks for file system. And if you're able to, let's say, Inject, inject some code there or make it do whatever, then you bypass SIP. Great. 
Um, so that's the obvious uh, attack surface for, uh, for C bypasses. And you know, when I started looking at C bypasses, I've seen l like really funny stuff like this thing right here, which is like a tweetable exploit. Uh, for, this is from 2016. And um, in this case, it was a C bypass, not, not like uh, I call it winning by points and not by, uh, by knockout. But the idea is that um, I won't go over like the entire details, but you have this uh, binary called uh, uh, FSCK, FSCK underscore CS that's supposed to fix like a file system. And uh, basically, this thing will trash a SIP protected file, just trash it with data that the attacker does not control. But just because, just because the attacker uh, trashes the file, it basically invalidates some other protection, specifically the kernel, ex uh, the kernel extensions that are uh, excluded from uh, Mac OS. So that's like a tweetable exploit from 2016. And I wanted to do something like that, again, as my learning process into Mac OS. Um, I started hunting for C bypasses, obviously looking for uh, SIP entitled binaries on my box, and looked for operations that could be exploited by an attacker. Um, interestingly enough, uh, I used uh, Jay's entitlement, ent entitlement database. It's, it's a, an online thing that you can use if you're unfamiliar with entitlements. You just click there, and it will ask you, let's say, give me all of the uh, com, apple, uh, rootless, inheritable, uh, uh, entitled binaries in Yosemite. And it'll just give you a set of uh, process of binaries. It's pretty cool to use. Uh, and after I found like a set of interesting, uh, um, a set of interesting Apple entitled binaries, I actually used Microsoft's own EDR, because we collect a lot of, of uh, telemetry from customers, to look for interesting child processes, because I was looking at the inheritable thing. Uh, and I did see these things, and as you can see, like, well, EFW cache update is not that interesting. I started understanding what it does and not very interesting. But what about ZSH? Um, I found that ZSH was a child process of system install D. And system install D is a very interesting, just like any other process that ends with a D, it's a daemon. It does something on behalf of the system. Uh, and in this case, uh, this binary also has com uh, apple rootless install inheritable. So very powerful. All of its child processes will, uh, by definition, by definition, will be able to uh, bypass SIP checks on the file system. Uh, that daemon gets invoked when you install a, an apple sign package, a PKG file. So uh, PKG files are also interesting very, very much, but I won't talk too much about them. But I did start playing a bit with system install D, and uh, system install D will do various tasks, like updating uh, caches, moving files to temporary paths, and, and so on. And interestingly, if the PKG file has a post install script, and so, some, of them, some of them do, then it will invoke the post install script. Uh, and that kind of explains why ZSH is a child process. It's basically like a shell script uh, that runs after the PKG was installed in the temporary uh, directory. Um, so that's pretty interesting because that means that ZSH now has control over, over the file system without uh, SIP restrictions. Um, so what does ZSH, I mean, what can ZSH do? Obviously, just like bash RC, you have ZSHRC. Uh, the ZSHRC files only run when, when in interactive mode. Obviously, we are not. But I did find ZSH env, uh, uh, like .zsh env on your um, home directory and etc zsh env. And if you read the ZSH source code, that's always fun because they call like any person that uses Z ZSH env a swine or something. And I really wanted to be that swine. So, um, so basically, I, I, I abused just that. And that's my trivial, very trivial exploit, I have to say, uh, almost tweetable. Um, you, what you do is, is, is this fo the following thing. You download an Apple sign package that uh, legitimately invokes ZSH, because it has a post install script that invokes ZSH. Uh, and you plant an easy etc ZSH env that does the following three-liner. If my parent process is system install D, then do whatever SIP free. And basically, you trigger the installer, and bam, you got a vulnerability with a funny name, as I, as I promised. Um, in this, in this screenshot right here, you can see that I'm showing you that CSR, uh, with CSR util, I'm showing you that the, uh, uh, the uh, SIP is enabled. Uh, I uh, show you the first line of uh, that particular file that was protected and abused in 2016, by the way. Um, 
And you can see that it looks like an XML. I try to write echo to it from root again. It won't let me. But then I run my shrewdless exploit, and uh, I show you that basically I'm able to write whatever content that I want to that file. And it's also it stays like a SIP protected file. So that's pretty insane, because if I'm a malware author, I can create like malware that way, and no one will be able to delete me like ever, right? And that's pretty bad because we're Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, and we try to delete files when when, when they're bad. So um, that's my first exploit uh, for that I'm going to show you today: the C bypass. And there is a bonus run here. I discovered that uh, when you run uh, sudo -s specifically on macOS, ZSH uh, saves uh, saves the home directory as is from the admin. It doesn't change to like slash root like you're used to in Linux. And that's kind of like an admin to root EOP, if you will, basically doing the same thing with uh, the home directory dot ZSH and saying something like, if, um, if my uh, effective user ID is zero, then do whatever. Um, it's, this time, it wasn't easy for me to trigger a root ZSH, uh, but it's cool to just lurk and wait to be rooted, if that, that makes sense. Uh, this thing is still unfixed, but I let Apple and the ZSH community know. Uh, at this point, again, it, it doesn't look like a vulnerability per se, because it, it's not easy to trigger that root ZSH, but you can uh, consider it to be like a red teamer uh, uh, tactic, if you will. So um, uh, an honorable shout out, by the way, after we released uh, uh, Shrewdless and the blog post and everything, uh, we, we saw that there was a similar discovery, I think a few months after, uh, by Perception Point. Uh, they did something uh, very cool. Instead of, uh, they also abused uh, system install D, but instead of, um, instead of uh, doing what we did, which, which was already uh, patched by Apple, they abused the fact that uh, system install D drops files to slash temp. But then uh, slash temp is a symlink on macOS to private temp. So by remounting slash temp and winning a race, you're able, basically able to make systemd in, run whatever you want. So that was a pretty cool exploit. Again, this is also, uh, also uh, patched now, so don't worry. Um, my, second, um, my, second part of the talk, my second part of the talk is a TCC bypass that I call PowerDeer. And um, here we go. TCC is uh, transparency, consent, and control. Uh, that's a macOS uh, technology that was first introduced in Mojave. And if, if someone asked me what TCC is, I, I say that it's the UAC equivalent of macOS. So whatever wants to control whatever. And in, in here you can see Microsoft Teams wants to access your microphone, or access your camera, or access your desktop, or access your whatever. So you'll get one of these like uh, nice little uh, pop-ups. And you can also configure this thing in like the security and privacy pane uh, uh, on your Mac. And uh, interestingly, unlike UAC, if you if you remember the Vista days when uh, UAC came out, uh, you had to like always always do like okay, 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 let me do that, let me do this, and so on. And Apple did something differently. UAC is stateless, but uh, TCC is stateful. So if I click OK here on Microsoft Teams, would like to access your microphone. Uh, macOS will remember that, and the next time that uh, Teams wants to access my microphone, uh, it will just use my response. So if I deny that, uh, it will stay denied, and if I allow that, it will stay allowed, unless I change something in this pane right here that you see on the right side. Um, internally, TCC uh, is maintained by a SQLite database, or da databases in plural, uh, because there are two of them, at least two. Uh, one of them is like a global system-wide one, uh, saved in that directory right here. And the, the second one is a per-user one, saved under the user's home directory, and then a, a, like a big uh, subdirectory right there. Both of them are called tcc.db. Um, because of that, uh, you have two tccd instances. Again, a, a process that ends with a d is a daemon. Um, and uh, tccd uh, enforces the policy, the tcc policy. Uh, so you have two TCCD instances, one for the user and one for the system. Um, in terms of protection, what protects those databases files? Um, the system uh, TCC database is SIP protected. So in order to write to it, you have to have a SIP bypass or SIP disabled in some way. But it's also TCC protected. So TCC, it's kind of interesting. TCC protects 
its own databases from being overridden and also from being read, actually. So if you don't have specific uh, TCC capabilities, you will not be able to read the database itself. The user TCC database is not C protected, but it's still uh, TCC protected. Uh, and again, you can't even read the database without a capability called full disk access, which is managed by the global C protected TCCD. So, um, so it's, it's, it's pretty well protected. In order to know whether you're uh, uh, TCC protected or not, you can just try to list directories. This is my home directory and then the, 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 director, the, the directory where the TCC DB uh, sits. And you can see here, again, I'm running even as root. I won't be able to even list files under that directory. Uh, interestingly, by the way, if you try to list a specific file under that directory, it will just show it to you. And that kind of gives you a hint on how TCC really enforces things. Uh, in the second line right here, in the second um, uh, snippet right here, you can see me again looking at uh, entitlements. In this case, the entitlement belongs to TCCD. That's, again, the daemon that enforces TCC. And you can see that it's quite powerful. It has tons of entitlements. But specifically, I want to talk about the com apple private TCC allow one, the one with the string underneath it. Just keep in, in your mind that TCCD is able to, uh, it has this com apple private TCC allow. Um, a naive TCC bypass, and I'm saying bypass here, because, uh, I'm saying bypass here like in quotes because it's not really a bypass per se. Uh, if terminal itself, let's say your terminal has full disk access, and a lot of macOS uh, users do set full disk access to terminal, then basically you can modify the user's TCC database without root even. Uh, so that's pretty, pretty cool to see. Checking if terminal has full disk access, I mean, without doing a lot of work, you can just conclude that from either logs or by trying to do the list, uh, listing of the files that I mentioned earlier. Um, and uh, so you can basically conclude that like automatically. Uh, if you're a defender, what you probably want to do is to watch out for file writes uh, and file reads of the TCC database. Anything that happens not from TCCD is, is basically suspicious. Uh, so be aware of that. And interestingly, it was abused by Dropbox uh, originally. Again, this is not a bypass per se. Uh, Dropbox assumed that there is going to be full disk access, and once you have full disk access, you can enable all of the user's uh, uh, TCC uh, permissions. So that's pretty cool to see. Okay. And uh, this, this uh, screenshot right here shows you how the TCC database looks like. Again, it's a SQLite database. Uh, once, of course, you have full disk access, otherwise you're not supposed to do that thing. And uh, as, you, as you can see here, there is a table called access, and it has a bunch of uh, 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 basically entries. I won't, go, I won't go over all of the entries, all, all of the different columns here, but I will say that uh, the first two ones are interesting. First two ones, uh, first one is uh, KTCC service whatever, which kind of indicates the kind of TCC capability that you have. And the second one is the name of the app. So uh, if your uh, Teams has microphone access, you'll see KTCC service microphone and then uh, com.microsoft.teams, for instance. And in terms of TCC capabilities, TCC has really fine-grained access. This is not a complete list by any means, but um, this is the name of the access versus the descri description next to uh, where it's saved. So for instance, Liverpool is like location services. So if your app wants to access location, it will have to have KTCC service Liverpool. Uh, same thing goes for calendar or reminder or whatnot. Um, microphone camera are also obviously interesting. And note that the two last entries are saved in the system TCC database, and uh, one of them is the full disk access. Uh, keep that in mind. If you remember from two slides ago, by the way, TCCD had um, uh, had this uh, com TCC Apple uh, com com Apple uh, private TCC allow entitlement with full disk access, and that kind of explains why TCCD is able to even access the TCC database. Um, there is one more minor thing that I won't talk too much about, but basically for some TCC services, there is a blob called CSREC that's uh, being compared in the table versus the calling app. Um, I won't talk about it too much, but it encodes like the code signing requirements for the app. 
and it wasn't, uh, in my opinion at least, it wasn't created in order to uh, mitigate against uh, TCC bypasses. So basically you can just forge your own. If you have your malicious app, you can just create your own CSREC. So that's not, like, that's a tiny hurdle really in a TCC uh, bypass coding. Um, and again, when we talk about, uh, about the attack surface, the obvious thing is, a, uh, is uh, Apple entitled binaries. And specifically, com apple private TCC allow is the name of the uh, the name of the entitlement uh, that Apple has. Uh, private Apple binaries may ha may have entitlements that allow them to bypass TCC checks. We've seen that with uh, TCCD, and there are others, of course. Uh, that's the obvious attack surface. And the obvious technique would be finding a binary with com apple private TCC allow, tamper with it in some way to affect its code flow, including injections, extensions, whatever, and get uh, fine-grained TCC access. So if you piggyback ride on, on an Apple, uh, on an Apple uh, entitled binary that's allowed to do TCC stuff, you're able to do this, the exact same thing without any pop-ups. Um, Apple takes TCC very seriously. If you guys never looked at TCC and you want to start, this should be like a good, uh, uh, a good um, motivation for you, for those who are uh, driven by money. I mean, for even for the like minor TCC bypass, you're supposed to get like 25 grand. For a complete TCC bypass, you're supposed to get like uh, 1,000, 100,000 grand. So uh, 100 grand, sorry. So pretty good money, I guess, if you're able to do something like that. Um, and I want to talk a bit about history of TCC bypasses. This is not a complete list by any chance, but um, it kind of uh, shows you the different mindsets or attack classes, if you will for TCC bypasses. So this was done in 2020, and it was done by, uh, uh, by basically mounting backups. Uh, there is a, a utility in macOS called Time Machine, and Time Machine basically is a backup and restore kind of a system. And uh, the backups apparently could be mounted with APFS mount. APFS is the uh, uh, file system, native file system on Mac. And you could mount it with the no owner flag. The no owner flag specifically, uh, uh, Makes, makes it, makes it uh, uh, available to read certain files and write to certain files. And because backup contains the TCC database, the file could just be read without any restrictions by anyone. It's also, again, a tweetable exploit. Uh, so uh, the idea was pretty simple. And even that, just, just reading the TCC database file is enough to be called uh, a TCC bypass. So that's like a trivial, cool uh, TCC bypass from 2020. Uh, another one from 2020, this, is, this wins by knockout and not by points. Uh, this was pretty interesting. When TCCD starts, the user TCCD, not the system one, it needs to access the TCC database in the home, uh, under the, uh, user, the relevant user. How does it, how does it know uh, where the TCC database uh, lives? Well, it's easy. It lives under the home directory and then whatever. But what is the home directory? Apparently, what TCCD did is to uh, expand the home environment variable. So basically, if you poison the home environment variable and reboot TCCD, you're able to even plant your own malicious TCCDB file. For instance, my home directory is now the temp directory. Uh, so that was basically the exploit. Um, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, so this was a really, really awesome exploit, and uh, and again from 2020. And if you think that only uh, only like researchers do those things, malware authors also do this thing. This was found by Jamf in 2021. It's a it's a malware that basically piggyback rides on on existing uh, apps with known TCC capabilities, like Zoom, for instance. Uh, and because of a bug in the way that Apple attributes certain operations to apps. It, it thought that uh, uh, the uh, malicious, the, the sorry, the microphone access, for instance, didn't come from the app. It's like the internal app right here. It came from Zoom and basically attribute that to Zoom. Uh, so uh, that was like an interesting uh, bug that was uh, used by uh, by malware uh, just to bypass TCC. Um, so when I started looking, I looked at all of those things and asked myself, well, how did Apple really fix those things? And Apple speaks specifically to the home directory uh, issue, uh, was basically changing uh, from expanding the home directory environment variable to use get PWUID, as they should. 
get PWUID, uh, that, that's like a, a standard code, even uh, uh, there, is, there is a Linux uh, version for that as well. You get basically a structure with all sorts of interesting information, including the home directory of the user, and that's basically what they do. Interestingly enough, um, uh, in Apple specifically, uh, Apple works with something called Open Directory, which is like the LDAP implementation for macOS. And there, then you can change like your picture, picture and, and, and name and, and whatnot, and also your home directory. And the way to talk to uh, this uh, directory services is by a tool called DSCL, uh, Directory Services something. And the idea is, is to change a property in your entry called NFS Home Directory. If you're able to change NFS home directory entry, you're basically able to basically uh, uh, revive that bug uh, from the grave and do exactly the same idea, planting your own malicious TCC database. Um, apparently, you can't simply use DSCL create, the command line that I just showed you, because uh, Apple foresaw this and saw that NFS home directory is kind of dangerous, so it's now hardened and you need a, spec a specific uh, TCC capability, again, the chicken and the egg problem, you need a specific ca uh, TCC capability to actually change the NFS home directory. And uh, that thing is saved in the user's local TCC database, and this is the equivalent pop-up. Interestingly, the pop-up doesn't say, uh, do you allow terminal to take over the world? It just says something like, do you allow terminal to administer your computer? If you say yes, then basically uh, you might get screwed because of that thing. Um, but still, again, this is not a TCC bypass because it, it does require uh, some user interaction. Um, so after some research, I discovered two other commands that are very cool. One of them is DS import and the other one's DS export. And the idea is that you can export your uh, uh, directory services entry to a file, edit it, and then use DS import. And interestingly, DS import does not require uh, that TCC capability, it wasn't hardened. So that was basically my exploit. Uh, I, I couldn't find a way to run DS import uh, without running as root, but still, I mean, if you're able to do a TCC bypass from root, it's still a TCC bypass. Um, and then, uh, so I, I basically submitted the bug to Apple with a full exploit, and they were like, yeah, yeah, we're fixing it. And then they fix it by accident. And if you, if you want to be snarky, it, that's not the right time because it's, it's a really hard bug to fix without breaking anything. And um, that was kind of a happy accident. And in Monterey, I, I noticed that my exploit doesn't work anymore. Uh, the reason for that is because they removed some uh, uh, entitlement from DS import. Uh, so basically, when I talked to Apple, they said that the issue was not fixed. But the question is, how can I bypass their happy accident, right? Because now I can't rely on DS import anymore. How can I still uh, 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 change my home directory? And if you remember my, the theme of this talk, uh, Apple entitled binaries, if you remember that, I basically went on hunt again and went to try to find an Apple entitled binary, and I did find one, config D. Config D, again, is a daemon because it ends with a D. Uh, it's responsible for configuration changes. To be honest, I have no idea what configuration changes mean, but it's a pretty good like binary for me because it, it's very attractive. It has the com apple private TCC allow with the same TCC capability to change the home directory. Uh, it has no hardened runtime. Basically, a hardened runtime is a way for Apple to prevent you from injecting code into it. And injection is not something very easy on Mac. It's not like Linux or, 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 or Linux. Uh, Linux or Windows, sorry. Uh, but in this case, config D is extensible by definition. This also explains why, why you didn't have hardened runtime. It basically allows you to load a configuration agent, which is basically a bundle, which basically will do a dialib load. Dialibs are basi basically like the DLL or SO equivalent in Mac. So, and basically using config D dash T and a bundle path, it will load that bundle, it will load my own dialib, and that was my renewed exploit. And this is the video that I'm going to show you. Uh, you can see here that I'm opening the uh, privacy pane, and you can see that Microsoft Teams, that's the app that I wanted to exploit, doesn't have camera or microphone access. I open my terminal, uh, run as root, because I still have to. Um, I show you the OS version for fun. I reset all of the TCC uh, information in the database. There is a utility called TCC util to do that uh, for all of my terminals, just to show you that I'm not cheating, obviously. 
and now I'm going to run my exploit. And my exploit, again, called PowerDeer, uh, is, uh, is going to give, in this case, a microphone and camera access to Microsoft Teams silently with no, uh, no user interaction. It will inject a dialib to config D and do all the things that we just discussed. And here we go. <laughs> Important shout out. Um, a very similar approach was discovered by Wojcic Regura. There's no way I pronounced that correctly. Uh, uh, and uh, basically what he did is was injecting uh, to the app that controls directory services. It had the same kind of capabilities and again, reviving that awesome home directory uh, poisoning uh, uh, vulnerability from the grave. Uh, Wojcic and Xaba uh, presented other interesting ways of TCC bypasses. Some of them win by knockout, some of them win by points, uh, but they're really awesome and you should definitely check them out if you're interested. Um, Bonus round, uh, I noticed when I uh, started reversing TCCD, the daemon that controls TCC, uh, and I, I saw a lot of interesting uh, SQL strings, uh, obviously because it has to interact with a SQL uh, database. And if you can see here right there in the corner, it looks like it's injectable. So I'm still, like I wasn't able to really inject because of the code path, uh, that the code flow that flows to this thing. But basically, I'm still looking for interesting SQL injections, on, on not just on TCC, by the way. There are other mechanisms in macOS that use, uh, use SQL databases, for instance, Gatekeeper, right? So uh, basically, the challenge would be doing a SQL injection on the OS itself. Um, and basically, we're continuing. Uh, we, we're doing a kind of like challenging every macOS uh, security mechanism one, time, one at a time. Uh, we already reported the sandbox escape to Apple, but uh, we can't disclose it because we don't drop zero days here. Uh, it's going to be called Open Sesame because I, d I decide on the uh, vulnerability names. Um, we are looking for a gatekeeper bypass. There are two awesome ones in recent memory, and we have a lead on a third one that, that we're going to basically implement. Um, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to find one. Uh, kernel bugs are pretty awesome. IOMFB seems to be a gold mine in, 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 Apple, in the Apple um, landscape. And there are, you know, we're starting to look at the uh, app specific ones. I heard that iMessage is Turing complete, so we want to do something similar perhaps. Um, perhaps less sophisticated though. Uh, a summary. Mac OS is a unique OS with proprietary security mechanisms that, in our opinion, does not get enough scrutiny from security researchers. Um, and, and especially ones that are overpowered. Again, Apple can sign their own stuff. You won't be able to do the same thing. So they have a lot of power in their hands, and we want to make sure that attackers don't abuse it by disclosing responsibly. Uh, stay tuned, and thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you.